<laughs> Wait. What? My Google Drive is almost full? What is this? Why do they only give me 15 gigabytes for free? I wonder how much it costs to upgrade. 49 cents for 100 gigabytes? What is 100 gigabytes gonna give me? I need the biggest one. Two terabytes? $99 a year. What in the world? You know what? You know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna build my own Proxmox server and I'm gonna host my own stuff. I don't need any Google. I'm gonna run my own stuff. So I wonder what I can really pick up for like 200 bucks. Oh my goodness. What in the world? I don't have $7,000 to spend on a server. What are they thinking? Do they think I'm rich? I literally have like $200 I could spend on this thing. What am I gonna do? Dude, literally stop overreacting. Literally, just, you could use that small Raspberry Pi that you already own. Why are you overreacting? Literally, just pick up that Raspberry Pi and it can run Proxmox. What? The Raspberry Pi can run Proxmox? That thing is like 50 bucks. How is that thing gonna run Proxmox when I'm looking at $7,000 servers on eBay? What are you talking about? Can it even run it well? How well? I'm currently running three VMs on that thing right now, and it's running them fairly well. And even one of them has Open Mini Media Vault running as a NAS. One has Docker containers, and one has the full-fledged XFCE desktop environment running in it. And they're all running off a single eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi four. Like, you don't need expensive hardware. Just stop overreacting. Stay calm, and take a look at your Raspberry Pi and. I bet you it's gonna get the job done good enough for you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't believe that this Raspberry Pi is literally running everything I need and I didn't have to spend anything. I already own this thing. Wow, that dude over there on that side, he saved me a ton of money. Just look at my thing right now. I have all of these different virtual machines running right here and they all work perfectly. Man, thank you so much anytime dude it's just like my mama used to say stay calm don't overreact and you'll figure it out but you know what's also pretty powerful pcbs from pcb way pcb way is a service that allows you to create custom pcb prototypes flexible pcbs 3d printing and much more and when comparing PCBWay to other PCB printing services, you might notice that PCBWay upgrades all of their standard PCBs to TG150-160 for free. They also provide you with a quick order PCB section to help you pick and design your PCBs nice and quickly. They are also currently celebrating their 8th anniversary by hosting a special activity with advantages such as free coupons, discounts on PCBs, lucky draws for modules, and even a referral program where you can get up to 10 $5 coupons. So if you ever consider purchasing some PCBs, there's never been a time better than right now. Okay, sure, the intro part, it was a bit exaggerated. I mean, you can totally find servers cheaper than $7,000, even under $500. And the Pi 4 probably isn't going to be your main Proxmox machine, but I mean, I think you would be surprised at how much you can actually do. But the point of the intro was to be funny and to show you that you don't always need a really expensive, beefy server. The Raspberry Pi 4 can really do more than you think. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. But first of all, so how do you actually install Proxmox on your Raspberry Pi 4? Well, I actually have a complete video guide I did a few months back that goes step by step through the process. And if you follow it, you should have Proxmox up and running on your Pi 4 in not too much time. I'm running my Proxmox up off a 64 gigabyte USB drive, but if you wanted a faster or more storage, you could always consider something like an SSD and connect that to your Pi 4. So now that we know how Proxmox runs on the Pi 4, let's dive into my installation, my dashboard, and I'll give you a tour of what I've set up and how I see the Raspberry Pi 4 actually is pretty powerful. 
Alrighty, so here we are on my Proxmox dashboard on my Raspberry Pi 4. But before we get into this, I probably would say I wouldn't recommend you guys to run as many virtual machines as I'm running right now. Your Raspberry Pi 4 probably can't handle all of these, but it is proof of concept. So I'm going to be showing you guys how much I have actually got packed on to one tiny 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. But let's start out right here. So right here, we can see right now, I'm running three virtual machines. They are they are all active right now and I have four CPU cores and right now I am not using much CPU whatsoever but my RAM usage is much much higher and I do have the 8 gigabyte model and I'm using about 6 gigabytes of RAM and let me tell you guys this is probably the most RAM I've ever used on a Raspberry Pi 4 it's pretty crazy and my disk space is fine everything else here is pretty good and i've actually i just rebooted pretty recently so i've only been up for about 14 minutes so my raspberry pi hasn't been on for too long either but let's go ahead and let's start out with my first virtual machine which is going to be running open media vault and my operating system in this is actually debian so for all three of these virtual machines i went ahead and i've installed the debian arm 64 just the normal version straight from the debian website and it's worked out pretty well for me right here but if you're interested in what my hardware looks like i can go i can go to um options or hardware and i've given this virtual machine four gigabytes of ram i've given it two processors and everything else is pretty standard so i, I have two cores for open media vault and four gigs of ram so it's not a really beefy system but let's see let me show you guys that it actually does work so here is the open media vault workbench or the open media vault website and if you're not familiar with open media vault it's basically a system that allows you to create a nas a network attached storage so i've turned my raspberry pi into a nas in proxmox while running open media vault so we can go to storage right here disks you can see that we have one 500 or 465 gigabytes hard drive connected to my raspberry pi 4 and i did have to forward it through the hardware price right here it's called usb device so i forwarded that kingston hdd and i turned this into a nas because it's in file systems it's mounted and i've shared that folder right here so if you want to see that it actually works let me give you guys a little showcase so open up our file manager right here go to this pc and this is running on the Proxmox server. And if I click it, you can see, bam, it works. And I, I just threw one file on here to test earlier. So we could go right here to some videos from this exact video that I recorded earlier. And they are bigger videos, so they will take a little bit. But I can copy it right over here. And bam, that video is on there already. Oh. And you can see I can play it like that. And it works. I could take another one right here. And... For some reason, doing that file transfer basically crashed the Open Media Vault thing, or it stopped working, so I actually had to completely reboot my Raspberry Pi, restart all of the virtual machines right here, and now it's working again. So that just shows how really kind of unreliable this is, and you probably shouldn't do this, but it is cool to see it working. So let me showcase that a little bit more. So we have two files on our NAS right here. I could add another one right here, just try to copy this over. And you see what it copied straight over there. And it did it fairly quickly, but let's see how big of a file this is. So this one is only 59 megabytes, so it's not a huge file. This video, on the other hand, right here, is a whole 3.45 gigabytes. It's a big one. So if we try to copy it over, you can see... For some reason, with this solution, it never actually shows a complete speed. It always is calculating. It doesn't really know. And items remaining, it kind of, you can see it going down. So the file does eventually get on our NAS, but it never shows us how quickly or how fast it is transferring, which I guess could do to the NAS really only having two cores. So it's just slow. I don't really know the reason behind it, but it does work. But would I recommend it? Again, probably not, but it's cool to see that we do have a working NAS in a virtual machine on the Raspberry Pi 4. And if you were just going to want to use this for small pictures like a screenshot, watch this. It goes pretty instantaneously. I mean, if we cancel the video, 
we can replace the file and it is super quick it just goes over there really quickly so the nas if for small files this nas could do the job well so let's head over to our next virtual machine which is going to be running docker containers so again i'm just doing this a test and it is cool so our docker container again is still just running debian arm 64. so it's not raspberry pi os this is straight up pure Debian ARM64, and I did go ahead and I used Nova Spirit's Pi hosted installation scripts to get Portainer up and running on this system. So we can go to containers, and currently I'm running three containers on this virtual machine. There's really nothing to look at in the terminal, but if we go right here, we can see I'm running three of them right now, and I could add more if I really wanted to. But let's start out with the beginning. So first of all, I did install Jellyfin as a Docker container, and I've added one of my videos in here. So let's see if it's going to play back any good. So I've turned down the volume. Let's click play, and let's see if we can run a video inside of a virtual machine inside of a Docker all right, container. So in today's video, all right, so it's playing right now, and this is one of my videos you can go and watch your if you're interested. Pie. But For, right now well, it's running at 7 At least one of them. So uh, I know it's hard to declare something good for the this. Best. I mean, but it only has two very, cores. Very it's probably really pushing itself right now. With all that and said, let's try let's skipping ahead a little bit. Up there. So there was so a lag there for sure, along, but it so did skip ahead and it did forward. work. Let's skip a little bit more. So it's not an optimal experience, but if you're willing to watch at 720p and have these little lags while trying to skip through, I mean, it does technically work. I guess it just stopped working right there. At least one of them. Okay, when I go so back I know to it's the beginning, it works. If I go there. So, definitely a laggy, laggy experience for Jellyfin. I probably wouldn't run Jellyfin in this type of server, but you could totally really run much lighter weight, like lighter weight Docker containers if you wanted to. Like Transmission is probably a better one to try to run, to try to download torrents. So let's get a torrent URL and try this out real fast. Let's try to get this one. All right, so here I have the Ubuntu link from right here. I can click upload and I can upload that URL right there. And it will it should start downloading Ubuntu in a second right here. So I think this is probably a better, like this could actually work a little bit better than Jellyfin, probably. I haven't extensively tested it. But you know, you could try to download some transmission or some torrents through a way such as this. And there totally are other applications you could try to run in here. I'm not going to say it's going to work well because I haven't tested them. But there are totally other applications in here that you could totally try to run, such as JDownloader. You could deploy the container, and it would launch on here. I don't know at what speed, but you know, see, oh, right, now, right now it says it's an hour and 47 minutes to download this thing. And that could totally be to due to my not great internet connection. But yeah. So you guys see, you can totally run Docker containers inside of this Proxmox container. And again, I, I gave this basically the same specs as my other one. I gave it four gigs of RAM and two cores. And it seems to work all right, not the quickest as you've seen, but yeah. So let's go over to my third virtual machine. And this is going to have two gigabytes of memory only and two cores as well. So if we go to console, this is going to be a full-fledged desktop environment and you may be like why do i need this well let's say you just wanted some desktop environment to search something to test out some application and you don't want to mess up your main linux system well you could run this on your raspberry pi like this and you could have a full-fledged linux desktop to test out different stuff so let's play around real fast all right so here's the xfc experience we can click applications as you see, there's there's definitely some lag, but we are running this through a like VNC server, so there is that too. It's not negative resolution. But if we click our terminal icon right here, try it again. All right, so it is acting up pretty laggy right now, and that's probably due to we're actually like downloading something in transmission right now, and it got a lot quicker as you see. So once you have a lot of stuff running, I can see that the Raspberry Pi is definitely going to struggle. But here in the terminal, we could type in NeoFetch if we wanted to, and give it a second to load up NeoFetch for us. So yeah, this is in a KVM virtual machine. We have quite a few packages, and I mean, 
you know, it's definitely not a great or super quick experience, but it does work. And if you needed to test some application that's lightweight, this could be a act, like a real solution. And like I said, probably running three containers at the same time on the Raspberry Pi 4 isn't the best idea. What I'd probably do, I'd probably stick to a maximum of two containers. Like I'd probably, I, I think it'd be okay to run something like XFCE and maybe a couple of Docker containers, or maybe run XFCE and Open Media Vault, maybe. Like, don't run three things, three kind of heavy things at the same time. Your Raspberry Pi 4, it's just going to be a little bit too much for that little dude. A little too much. <laughs> but yeah, so you see, it does download kind of kind of quickly not terrible but yeah so with all of those things running at the same time right now we have used quite a lot of our memory i don't know why our cpu usage is never that high doesn't really make sense to me but yeah all right so that about concludes it for this video so i really hope you guys found this video at least interesting maybe even inspirational to go and try out using proxmox on your raspberry pi for yourself and if you do do that please let me know what you find or what you can get running down below in the comments because proxmox really is a fun type of project to get into and i've really enjoyed it so if you want to see more Proxmox content, let me know down below. And if you enjoyed the video, a like. If you really enjoyed it, a subscribe would mean a lot. So, thanks for watching.